following report contains some triggering content. Sexual harassment is prevalent in the UK and has taken root in the underbelly of university culture. In April, Everyone's Invited published figures about the number of testimonies they had received relating to sexual violence, assault and harassment in different UK universities. Durham had the sixth most, with 41 submissions. Meanwhile, Durham Survivors, a group which publishes anonymous testimonies of sexual violence and misconduct from victims in the Durham community, has had at least 149 submissions since its launch in July 2020. While these cases are not verified by the organizations and do not represent official statistics, they clearly highlight the problem of sexual violence in Durham. Sarah Everard's tragic killing, which sent shockwaves across the UK, led to the formation of national and local grassroots organizations to galvanize action and provide support in the community. One of these organizations is Urban Angels, set up in March 2021 by 22-year-old Exeter graduate Talisker Alcovia Cornford. They are on a mission to make society safer for all those who identify as women, non-binary, and gender fluid. They recently reached over 2,800 followers on Instagram and have added Durham to its list of Facebook groups, aiming to foster a sense of community and solidarity. So could you tell us a little more about some of the initiatives that you set up or are planning to set up? Yes, so the primary um, sort of mission that we're on at the moment is we're setting up Facebook communities across um, cities and towns and areas in the UK. And what those Facebook groups aim to do is foster the sense of community um, with people in the community to provide a space where they can come and seek uh, support and solidarity for experiences of assault and harassment. They can come and share alerts. So let's say they experience or witness harassment in their area, they can put it in the group with the hopes that others can then avoid it. And also a space where we can kind of work together to think of ways to help make our community safer, whether that be a walking scheme or better street lighting, um, or better communication with um, organizations like hotels and bars and restaurants. And I guess some of the main things that we're looking to do um, in sort of the physical space rather than the virtual world is setting up a walking initiative whereby mm. there'll be volunteers on um, every night of the week that you can call to walk you from point A to point B, whether that be from a nightclub home or to the library or to a friend's prees or whatever it might be. Um, and we're also hoping to set up safe spaces across towns and cities whereby we would have a network with all the bars, hotels, restaurants, supermarkets, whereby they'll register as a safe space. So they'll have a sticker outside their window so that people know that they can go in and seek support if they ever feel unsafe. I think there's still very much a victim blaming culture in society. Um, and so I think a lot of people do feel fearful to speak up when it comes to things like yeah. this it's important that they know that they're not alone but also they know that they can come somewhere where people will listen to them and um and believe them for starters but also be able to provide that support whether it be emotional or um sort of tangible in terms of directing them to services that can help them on a more professional level we think as well with our instagram page which is um not necessarily location specific it's universal we're trying to kind of foster a culture in society and trying to put a message out there that you know you need to speak up, make your voices heard, but also speaking to those who are potentially the ones that are putting that anxiety on others and saying, mm -hmm. hey, let's stop victim blaming, let's listen, let's have open hearts and open minds and really try and help tackle this together. Do you think that now, especially post lockdown, women, um, ev like every other people are going back to their normal lives, like daily commutes and going out at night? And so the risk is higher now. And a lot of women are feeling sort of post-lockdown anxiety about that. A hundred percent. I think, I mean, I definitely feel that way um, going back into society. I think it's a double-edged sword because when we were in lockdown, there was fear because there weren't as many people out and about. So when you do go out, you feel less safe. Yeah. Um, but now I think with things opening up again, you still feel scared because there's more potential people that will be harassing you or... Um, even worse assault and things like that. Um, but I think we've tried to kind of remind people that it's okay to be socially anxious and it's normal. And I think we, we kind of spoke about it on our Instagram quite recently that it's completely understandable to feel vulnerable and to feel anxious about going back into society. But I think hopefully this group and knowing that every person in the community is looking out for you um, should hopefully mm. leave that a little bit. Uh, a very big mission of ours is to kind of liberate women in a way that we haven't been able to before because our freedom is restricted you know yeah. men don't even think about these types of things 
in the sense that they, they can just go out whenever they want, come back whenever they want. They don't have to worry about what they wear. They don't have to worry about the way that they walk or how they carry themselves. Right. And this is something that restricts us in everyday life. Even going out, you know, now when it's still light outside, I need to think about what I wear. Will I get attention? You know, those types of things. And it's absolutely ridiculous. We should have the freedom where we can go out and what we want, um, walk whatever time of day and not yeah. fit our lives. What do you see or what do you hope for Urban Angels in the next few years? Um, obviously, I hope we keep expanding. I think what's been really inspiring and empowering for me to see is how many people have come forwards to be a part of this and wanting to set it up in their own community and I think the network we've cultivated has been a really beautiful thing so I'm hoping to continue, mm. continue to grow that um, both in in the UK but also abroad and I think um, flesh out some more of our initiatives um, for example the walking scheme we're piloting it in Exeter but I'd hope to get that to all cities Obviously, there's logistical, operational and funding things that have to go into that, but that's a name. And then I think definitely the safe spaces is something I really want to get out there as soon as possible, um, as well as generally just trying to challenge the status quo, break down those barriers and really as well get men involved in these conversations and get them also actively participating and making change. Because I think there often feels like it's the responsibility of women to make this change, but in reality, it isn't. It's men and we need them to be involved as much as we are to really make this change happen. So I think trying to get all genders involved in these conversations and everyone feeling like they have responsibility for this. Is there anything that you would like to say to anyone who wants to get involved with Urban Angels? What are the sort of steps that they should take to be an active member of the group? Obviously, we encourage everyone to be involved, um, irrespective of your gender. Uh, We love anyone getting in contact you can get in contact with us on our Instagram page Um, you can get in contact with us through any of our Facebook communities Um, if you like if you would like to set up a community I'm here to sort of train people and support them along the way Um, but we also have opportunities for blog writers graphic designers you name it so if you want to be a part of it but you're not sure how Um, just let me know that you're interested and I'm sure we can find a place for you in the team. On a more local scale, Durham-based organization Take Back the Bailey has very similar aims. They actively campaign against sexual violence and assault through promoting awareness and breaking the stigma surrounding sexual harassment and encourage university societies to take a public stance against sexual violence. Their main goal currently is to promote active bystander training and make people feel as safe as possible in Durham. Clearly, there is a long way to go to make Durham a safer place. A recent report revealed that at least 167 cases of suspected drink spiking were reported by Durham University students to JCRs in the opening days of this term, further plunging the safety of the city's venues into doubt. But the success of organizations such as Urban Angels, Take Back the Bailey, and Durham Night In shows that there is a growing interest in making positive change.